So yeah, I'm Simon from Solution7. Um, in my session, um, this is a very condensed demo. Normally our demo takes around an hour. So I'm, I've got a condensed version of our demo where I'm gonna show you how you can build financial reports and um, if there's time, show you our planning and budgeting capability um, all in the comfort of Microsoft Excel. Um, let me tell you a bit about Solution7. Uh, we joined the NetSuite SDM Partner Program in 2013. Um, we were partner of the year in 2018. Uh, we have over 550 NetSuite customers globally. Um, we are one of the most reviewed products on SuiteApp.com. I think we are either the second or third most reviewed product on SuiteApp.com. Um, the great thing about Solution7 is everybody talks about a fast implementation time. Our implementation is about one hour. Because it's only an hour, because we're super easy to implement, um, we're very happy to offer a free trial. So if you like what you see in this session, let the guys at Net at Work know and we can certainly set, set you up with a free trial. What is Solution 7? Fundamentally, we're an Excel plugin. Um, think of us a bit like this blue arrow. We sit between your Excel spreadsheets and the back end um, NetSuite system. So you build the reports how you want to see them in Excel in a very simple way. And then we do all the heavy lifting in terms of grabbing that data from NetSuite. Again, the important thing to remember is we're a live real time reporting system. So um, any reports you build with Solution 7 are instantly refreshable as soon as you post your journals into NetSuite. Who are we designed for? Well, we're very much a finance friendly tool. We're not aiming the product at the IT team. You know, you don't need to bring in a consultant to implement Solution 7. This is designed very much for the finance team um, to build your own reports. And you know what it's like, you're up against um, last minute deadlines, requirements change. Again, with Solution 7, it's super easy to take a report, change it very, very quickly and manipulate it for the um, situation that's needed. And to give you a feel for some of our customers, um, we work with A&W. Um, they use NetSuite um, in Canada. We work with pret here in the UK. They do all of their store reporting through Solution 7, something like three to 400 stores um, nationwide. Um, we've recently signed up Medicine Sans Frontières out of Norway. Um, again, they've got a global footprint and they use Solution 7 in a lot of their local offices. And finally, we also work with the Royal Albert Hall here in London. Um, again, they use it as part of their month end reporting and their um, annual reporting that they do to the Charities Commission. Fundamentally, Solution 7 is about building great looking financial reports. What do I mean by that? Well, they're the type of reports that you want to see. More importantly, they're the type of reports that your stakeholders want to see. So, you know, it's about your look, your feel, your colors, your logos. We're not talking about taking reports like NetSuite produces and then dumping them to Excel and present and rejigging them. We're actually building the reports directly from within Excel. Why Excel? Because we know that you already know how to use the software. We know you know NetSuite. We know that you know Excel. We can also do simple financial planning. Now, if there's time in my session, this is where I might have to cut off early if I run out of time, but I'll take you through how we can do financial planning and how you can use Solution 7 as part of your forecasting, reforecasting, and annual budget processes. Fundamentally, how that works is you build a template, we publish that template for you, and then you gather those templates back in and you push them up into NetSuite. The important thing being that all of your actuals are in NetSuite, all of your budgets are in NetSuite, and then you can start to combine those numbers together to build even more reports. So for example, rather than having to reforecast regularly within NetSuite, let's say you do quarterly forecast, but you want a, a monthly rolling position, it's very easy to build a report where you can put in actuals to date, budgets into the future, combine them together, and you know, a secret between you and me, this report is no more difficult than an Excel if statement. Right, let me dive into the demo. Um, I'm going to show you how to build a basic report. It's going to look like this. Again, what we're not trying to do here is to show you how impressive the software is from a look and feel, just how simple it is to build your first report. And typically we have customers building this report within the first hour of using the software. I'm gonna start with a blank workbook and I'm gonna introduce you to a couple of concepts up here on the ribbon. The first of those is something that we call a pop-up list. Now what this allows us to do, what these pop-ups allow us to do is to grab data directly from NetSuite. So to start with, I'm going to insert a pop-up of 
subsidiaries. Now notice here, Excel's list argument screen. You'll notice when you're building a report, I'm never showing you a screen that you're not already familiar with. Although we've written this screen, it's designed to look and feel exactly like Excel's baked in dialogues. Again, that's how we get our one hour implementation. I click on okay, and there you can see we grab our subsidiaries directly from NetSuite and we drop them into the workbook. And again, remember, we're talking live real time directly to NetSuite. Next, oh, sorry, that's the problem with PowerPoint. Next, I'm going to insert um, a list of accounts. So these are going to be a list of GL codes. I'm going to insert a list of accounts by number. Again, there's that list argument screen. So again, remember, once you've seen one of these screens once, you know how to use the software. It's really not complicated. For the subsidiary parameter here, I'm going to use my lookup button to grab, again, that directly from NetSuite. I'm just going to take the consolidated subsidiary. Here, I'm going to choose a range of accounts. And can you see there I've used an asterisk? That's a wild card. And that's going to give me all of the account codes that start with a digit four. Again, I click on OK, and we drop those directly into the workbook. Now, in addition to using Solution 7 functionality, because we're working within Excel, I can also use baked in Excel functionality. So to build my financial periods, can you see here, I've just typed in a year. Now, uh, this was actually built on a 2017 data set. That was all we had um, from NetSuite at the time. But you can see here, if I type in the year, in this case, 2017, I can then use a series of Excel formulas to build out my period headings. I'm going to use Excel's date function, I'm going to use Excel's text function, and I'm going to use Excel's edate function. Now, what that gives me, the date function allows me to take my year and generate a date of January 2017. The text function allows me to format that date, and that's the format that we're using in NetSuite to identify the financial periods. And then finally, the edate function allows me to do some basic data arithmetic, so I can add one month to January. And then finally, I can just use good old copy and paste to take my... February, copy it all the way across, and that gives me my, my January to December headings. Now, having inserted my headings, um, I'm going to use another concept within Solution 7, and that's what we call our functions. Now, what functions allow us to do, think of them as a bit like Excel's own VLOOKUP or SUMIF. Um, what, what those functions do is they aggregate data that's already been brought into Excel. What our software does, uh, what our functions do, sorry, is they allow you to go off to NetSuite. Again, it's in real time. Go off to NetSuite to grab that balance and to drop it straight into the workbook. So here you can see I've got a function called NSGL ABAL. NS because it's NetSuite, GL because it's the general ledger that we're working with. And here we're working with our account balance function. Notice as well, we've got an NBAL and a TBAL. So all of these functions are named in a similar way. This allows us to report off the name of the account. This allows us to report off the type of the account. And if I use the ABAL function, you can see again, you get that same experience. You get the same native function arguments dialogue. So again, I know you know Excel, so I know that there's really nothing to learn. Let's now populate this function. So first of all, I need to um, pop, grab the subsidiary. Well, we've got that on the workbook. That's here in cell C3. So I'm simply going to reference cell C3. For the account, I'm going to pull in our 4000 code. That's going to be B6. And for the period, I'm going to grab my January 2017 heading. Notice as well on my dollar references, that will allow me to copy my formulas around the workbook. I click on OK. We initially get an error because, again, we're going to NetSuite now to grab that data. And it just drops in as the result of the formula. Though, So for January 2017, our sales income is a credit of $1.8 million. And I can easily reverse the sign of that. We're showing it as a negative here because we're honoring the double entry, the debits and the credits within the accounting system. So I can simply reverse reverse the sign. Again, we're just using good old Excel to do this and pop a minus sign into the formula. That gives me my positive balance that I can then copy across, copy down. We get all those errors. Those errors start to disappear as the foot values come back from NetSuite. And to finish off the report, I just type in my total sales, total for the columns, total for the rows, sorry, and apply all of the formatting that I need. And again, we're just using standard Excel formatting. Um, I like to hide the first row. So we can hide those date calculations. I also like to turn the grid lines off. And then finally, we can throw on graphs and charts. And graphs and charts are super easy because, again, if you know how to use Excel's graphing and charting capability, you already know how to lose, use Solution 7. Now, this is really where the fun just begins because having built our report, I can also change the detail that's being shown. So let's say, for example, I want to switch from my consolidated subsidiary to my Mexican subsidiary. I can simply use the pop-up to do that. I can choose my different sub. I can click on OK, and the whole 
report will refresh in front of us. I can do the same for the year. So again, with the same report, I just change the driving parameter. In this case, we're rolling it back a year. And again, the whole thing simply updates in front of us. Now, I'm sure you've been there at month end where you've been looking at a report that you've built and you've been trying to better understand the numbers. Maybe someone's questioning on the, the, questioning you or those numbers. Maybe you've just got a feeling that one of those numbers is wrong. Well, we've got our own drill down and drill back capability that allows us to get under the cover of those numbers. And let me show you how that works. I can pick any formula from within Solution 7 and I can right click on it. And from the right click menu, I can drill down. And here you can see that I can drill down by all of the standard dimensions that are in, within NetSuite. I can also drill down on custom fields. I can drill down on custom segments. Here I'm going to drill down by subsidiary. So that two and a half million, million dollar balance, you'll see that that's made up of three different balances from three different companies. And there's our two and a half million dollar total. And you notice we've simply created a new sheet in the workbook. Now I don't have to stop there. I can drill down further. So let's drill down on that 1.4 million and drill down by location. Again, I can drill down further. Let's say take that $670,000 and this time we're going to drill down by class. Finally, we're going to drill all the way down to the underlying transaction detail. So these are the individual debits and credits that you'll have posted into NetSuite. We can go all the way down to the individual um, line items. And you'll notice here, if I highlight this particular row, this $1,075, um, you can see here that over on the right hand side, we've got a document reference. So once you're down at the lowest level of detail, if you're questioning that document still, you can actually click on the hyperlink. It will take you back into NetSuite and you can log into NetSuite, find the offending line item. There you can see we've got 1,074.75. I can now make my correction, either post a credit note to an invoice or maybe alter the invoice. Maybe I've got to post a correcting journal, whatever I need to do to that document to put the correction through. And then the minute that that has been posted, I can jump back into my workbook. I can go up here, I can hit the refresh button and I can say refresh the current sheet. And you'll see there all of the numbers just flow straight through and into our financial report. Let's talk quickly about financial planning. Um, as I said in my slide earlier, this is how our financial planning engine works. You build a template, you publish that template either via email or via the cloud. Maybe you're going to use Google Sheets or Microsoft OneDrive or Box to publish your reports. Let me show you how that works. Again, we're not trying to set the world on fire with the world's most clever financial planning system. Think of it more like a mail merge process. So we're trying to keep the, the process simple and allow you to publish simple workbooks. Here I've built a template based on my location and I can choose any one of my locations. Now, so alongside this sheet, we've got something called an automation sheet, and this is where the mail merge side of it kicks in, because you can see here, I've got all of the individual values that I want to put onto my report. You can see here are my San Francisco values, I want to put into a sheet, a book called San Francisco. Here are my Boston values, I want to put into a book called Boston. Finally, I'm going to generate an email. How does that work? Well, we simply go up here, we hit the email option here, we can then choose um, what we want to be in the body of the email. I click on OK, and you'll see that the whole thing will then recalculate against the different values that we're trying to publish with. Finally, we get an email sent out. That then comes into my inbox. So if I flick roles over to be a budget holder rather than um, the, the FP&A guy producing the reports, I get an email into my inbox. There's the two attachments. Let's open up the Boston attachment. You can see here, this is our Boston sheets. Remember, we're only creating and managing one sheet but can you see here how we've created two sheets for Boston? Same is true for San Francisco. You can see here, one, two, three, four sheets for San Francisco. So again, you're having to do a minimum set of amount of maintenance and you're publishing those reports out or those budget templates out automatically. Now your users can interact with those reports. They're standard Excel files. You don't need a NetSuite license. You don't need a Solution 7 license to be able to edit those files. They're just regular old workbooks at this point. And then to get those numbers back into NetSuite, once you've completed that budgeting or forecasting cycle, we now have a write back mechanism. So what you're able to do is you can take your you can take your workbooks and you can define the shape of the workbook. So can you see here that my subsidiary is defined up here in cell G4? Here's my financial periods. Here's all my account codes. Here's my budget category. Here's my location. They're all up here on the left hand side. You'll see we've got a column header defined and a row header defined. And with that, we can now find the data in the workbook. So to publish it, uh, to push it up into NetSuite, again, I go up into the ribbon, hit the upload button, choose all the sheets that I want to upload, hit upload, we validate the workbook and push all the numbers into NetSuite for you. Finally, we create an upload summary. 
here are all the numbers within NetSuite. So this is actually directly within NetSuite's budget module. And again, once those numbers are in NetSuite, you can build any financial report, be that a Solution 7 report, be that a built-in NetSuite report, and here's a quick plug, be that a Satori report that you're going to see later, you can publish those num you can view those numbers directly in any one of those systems to do an aggregated view of your budgets. So 21 seconds to go, that's not too bad. To sum up, great looking financial reports, PL, balance sheet, cash flow, dynamic calculations directly from NetSuite with drill down, with drill back, graphing and charting, publishing to net to PDFs, Excel, and so on. Scalable financial planning, so using Excel for what it's good at, publishing data, grabbing it back and not using it as a database. Oh, there's my alarm going off. I'll stop that. <laughs> Don't forget it's a one hour implementation. Don't forget we can offer a 30 day free trial. Most importantly, if you like what you see in the system, talk to the guys at Net at Work. We can set you up with a free trial. If you want to see this session again, I've got a slower version of my session available on YouTube. Just Google Solution 7 and you'll see it available on YouTube. And I think I'm about 30 seconds over. <laughs>